In no other sport on earth is hockey and brotherhood so synonymous. At Merrimack College outside of Boston, Massachusetts, the game forges together 28 young men from all across the continent into one of the most elite teams in college hockey. Work together! Amongst these brothers are the fair share of characters, perfectionists, and leaders. To all of these brothers, one thing remains the same. The fact that the name on the front of the jersey means more than the name on the back. Everybody works extremely hard, and so it's a lot of fun. Change it up, change it up, good luck! That's how hard you need to play for a chance to win. Just going out there the last two practices, just trying my best to uh, prove that I can be out there. So. Getting ready for that first game. You take it shift to shift, you take it period to period, um, you take it game to game. Get an unprecedented look at these 28 brothers as the Warriors battle for ice time as well as study time in an elite Hockey East conference. Coming up now on Merrimack Hockey All Access. Merrimack College Athletics prides itself on the hard work of all its athletes. This blue collar program on the rise gets its foundation in the basis of superior strength training and conditioning. Just chiseled, chiseled ab work by Carl. Look at those things. Stellar, Carl. Stellar. <laughs> One player must take a different approach to his workout. Speedy forward Elliot Sheen, who went down with a shoulder injury three weeks ago. Take another look at this play uh, here with Sheen. That uh, look appears that he kind of jammed his upper body, his upper left hand. Unable to play in the past four games, the senior must make a valiant recovery in time to salvage his final season with the Warriors. What we want to do is we want to get Elliot strong. Uh, we want to have range of motion. We want to have good uh, stability in his upper body so he can withstand the, the challenge of hockey. Um, so he can take on the, the weight of another player, be checked in the boards, and, and protect himself. Uh, we also want to make sure that he's not going to be sustaining any other injuries. So uh, we went through a rigorous process between our team doctor and also with our staff uh, in order to make sure he'd be ready for that. So a major part of uh, Sheena's rehabilitation is just managing his pain, managing the inflammation he has, so stimming the ice is going to be a, the biggest help for that. So that's, he does this pretty much every day. Uh, so Stim's an electrical current that's coming from this machine. It's going to translate into his body. It's going to affect this, his pain sensations, so it's going to take some of his pain away as it goes. It's also going to act as a muscle pump, which will help to influence the amount of swelling he has. We think we'll get him back for this weekend. Uh, how effective he is will have a lot to do with uh, how quickly he can get acclimated to the pace of play. Um, you know, he's in great condition. Uh, he's, he's, and, and BC plays very fast. Not having a guy with his speed in the lineup could hurt us. So. I mean, the last couple of weeks have been tough to watch, for sure. You know, it's, especially being a senior, you want to get out there and help the boys. But these last three weeks, I guess, we've got a couple of big games coming up, so I want to be a part of it, you know. Whatever happens after the regular season happens, but you know, these are the six games you control and the six games you have guaranteed, so just uh, do everything I can with my power to get back in there. After the weight room session is complete, some of the players must get to class to balance athlete with student. Several players are in Adventures in Math, a general elective for business majors. So Adventures in Math is a course that's actually designed for non-science and math majors who need to fill a math or science requirement. So we decided to go with a textbook that lets you actually explore what math really is. Not just how is it used somewhere, but what do mathematicians actually do with their lives. We don't balance our textbooks every day, we don't look at numbers every day, we play with a much broader, much prettier subject. And the goal is to tell the students about how beautiful math can be and maybe try to convince them that it's not just torture but a little bit of fun along the way. We have a, we call it the math team and all the boys come over, like uh, they came over on Monday night and we did the homework that was due for Wednesday so we were getting, getting ahead of the go. game a little bit. So. I just try to write down what she's saying and then try to comprehend that the best I can so I know what I do when tests are coming up. They're just the same as all the rest of the students. They come into class, they come in wearing their jackets, so I know that they're on a team, but they're just the same as everyone else. They're held to the same deadlines, held to the same everything, and they even tend to be a little bit extra responsible because they know that their time is very busy. 
they'll turn in their homework early. The first homework assignment I always get is actually from one of the members of the hockey team. Um, they'll let me know anytime they've got games coming up. They talk with me about the homework ahead of time. Sometimes they come see me during their study halls because it's a good time to come and ask a professor questions. With a hard day of practice looming tomorrow, it's one step closer to game day. Wednesday morning begins as the team gathers informally in the dining hall before the day's practice. The topic of the morning was last night's Valentine's Day and how some players were busier than others. I did absolutely nothing. I actually did homework. All my, uh, all my roommates have girlfriends, so yeah. they were all out for dinner and doing romantic things, and I was sitting in my room by myself doing homework. It was pretty depressing. Uh, Totter actually Totter asked me out on a date, but he never texted me later. We were supposed to go to a movie, and then he never ended up texting me. I got kind of set up by Jesse. Well, I, I kind of rethought my thoughts, and I was like, <laughs> I don't really want to hang out with Ellis tonight. It might look a little kind of suspicious, the two of us oh, going to, to a movie. He wanted to go to the vow. I was like, there's no way I'm going to go see that with another guy. That is untrue. Actually, that's a little bit true, probably. After a hearty meal, the players head over to the rink where the power play unit and goaltenders get the first sheet of ice. However, the goaltenders first use the time to work on their offensive prowess. Slides it across. Takes it back from Stoli. Scores! Meanwhile, equipment manager and Merrimack College senior Matt LaMalfa sets to the task of tending to the team's skates before the full practice begins. I've been here for four years now. I'm a senior, so I've been doing it since my freshman year. My first couple, I was an assistant, and then the last couple of years, I've been doing it full time. So as equipment manager, you just oversee a lot of different tasks, from skate sharpening to uh, all the travel arrangements, our equipment pack up, our breakdown. So it keeps me busy quite a bit of the time, especially this time of year when things are getting pretty tight. This is our skate sharpener. Um, this gets a lot of use during this time of year. We got the cross grind wheel, which we'll use for any imperfections on a skate to get those out, get the steel back to level if guys take a puck off the skate or maybe go skate to skate with somebody else and their steel gets messed up, we use that to get it back to normal. And then this is the finishing wheel, which puts the edge on it. We have uh, three different edges that most guys use, a 5 eighths sharpening, which is a little bit duller for some of the bigger guys, and then a half inch, which is the most popular, and then 3 eighths, which is a little sharper. That's mostly for the smaller guys who want to dig into the ice a little more. If a guy like, say, Big O's used a 3 8 he'd be stuck in the ice and he wouldn't even be able to move. So, you know, you got to kind of know the guys. They have personal preferences, some of them. Some other guys come in and aren't really sure. You can kind of help them just based on their size and their skating ability. It's definitely something I've always kind of had an interest in. And for me, it's hard to watch a game now and not pick up on things like that. I mean, guys fall down and immediately my first thought is, well, I hope it wasn't something that I did. I hope they didn't lose an edge. So. It changes your perspective a little bit, but I mean, it's something I really enjoy and would like to keep doing. As the rest of the players arrive for practice, Coach uses the intermission to go through video from previous games, assuming the TV will come on, of course. Matt! Matt! You find the rink, guys? We have a fuse out. We have a fuse out. With practice on hold for a moment, goaltender and Vancouver Canucks draft pick Joe Canada finds time to do some video work of his own. I just look at tendencies, tendencies throughout the game, uh, things I did good, things I did bad. Sometimes I'll tend to be deep in my net or just some things that past teams have done against me, and stuff like that, things I can work on in practice. So. After power is restored, the video session and practice continues as planned. See how they've got a guy in the slot and then we've got a, they've got a guy on the back door. Okay, defenseman, we have to be aware of the back door. Okay. Give me the power play guys up here if we can and the penalty kill. Everybody else, you want to jump on the ice, you want to get ready to go on the ice if you can. As is tradition with the last practice before a game, the session ends with a shootout competition nicknamed the Showdown. Usually, it would determine the last to score, but with the vital weekend ahead, coach changes the rules. You know what, I don't know if we want to reward guys for not scoring. So, uh, today, we're about scoring goals. Okay, you score, you stay. 
you don't, you're out. You score, you stay, you don't, you're out. That's today's rules, okay? Don't save your good move. Don't save your good move. With the action too good to miss, Coach Dennehy gets in on the action and ends the first round with a bang. Let's go, second round, boy! Over the next few rounds, the field grows smaller and smaller, concluding with one skater remaining, forward Jesse Todd. Jesse's prize includes leading the team in the after-practice stretch, a task that, at times, proves more difficult than it sounds. Good week of practice, okay? Good week of practice. If you guys have a, a good understanding of what we need to do, it's a matter of making plays, it's a matter of, of communicating, supporting each other, okay? Supporting each other on the ice, on the bench, in the locker room, okay? From here on out. I like how this team's heading, okay? Back in the locker room after practice, Coach is able to give Jesse a proper prize for winning the showdown. Until we can make you a crown, sir, Jesse. <laughs> Play fast, be ready to make plays. Be ready to make plays. Okay, this is the fun time of the year. May I remind you, this is why you came here, okay? These, these, this is why you came here. This is the fun part, all right? So we'll see you tomorrow. Good job. You don't have to clap all the time. Some of it doesn't warrant, some of it warrants standing ovations, I understand, but I never get them. Defenseman Kyle Bigos is not only the tallest player on the team at six foot four, but is also known for his antics off the ice. Team jokester. I didn't say Bigos. Kyle Bigos. Kyle Bigos. Oh, that's gotta be my roommate, Kyle Bigos. Bigos, Bigs, probably Bigos. Kyle Bigos. Bigos. Kyle Bigos. Bigos. At times, I'm not sure he has a serious bone in his body. How now, brown cow? Unique New York. Unique New York. Some people, he looks hilarious well, with his hair and, uh, you know, doesn't have much teeth under there. I'm going to go shout out to my mom to have back home. He always has something new or movie quotes coming into the locker room every day. It's never the same. How much wood could a wood chuck chuck wood chuck chuck wood? Yeah. All right, we're ready. Today, his target is leading goal scorer Ryan Flanagan, who left his shoes on top of Kyle's things and must pay the price for the mix up. Ready? Oh. They really, guys, they really hide my sneaker. <laughs> you know they did too, didn't they? I made. They did. They definitely did. I knew, I knew I'd be the front of this joke. I'm not walking out there in sneakers. Get that out right now. Oh, Warmer. Not the way that up there. So we talk. Big O. Oh, it's about to break. They said, "What? Well, there's they weren't scattered throughout the room." I guarantee it was probably Todd. Todd Collins and Big O's with three prime specs every time. The night before a game begins a long series of superstitions for some players that will continue right up until game time. Put all the right side of my gear on first before my left. The left skate first, then the right skate. Everything on my left goes first, and then my right for all the pads. One, uh, every time I tape up my knee pads with the clear tape, and Always goes to Brandon Ellis right afterwards. It hasn't touched the ground in two years. That from there to there is pretty pretty far thrown. There's been some close calls. Like I'd probably freak out a little bit if we dropped it. But another one, Kyle Bigos after warmups always gets me my towel for uh, wiping off the sweat. No way. Some are the biggest fluffiest towel right here. Dude. Me and Jeff play baseball in the room here for a bit. We throw a ball around. Yeah, we throw, take turns, and you know, make some double plays, grounders, everything. I always uh, eat a banana, that's a big thing. Banana, and then I'll take my sticks and I'll eat an orange, and then I go out and play uh, the soccer ball. A long-standing superstition involves a group of players going to a local restaurant. Last week I had the chicken and steak. That was pretty good, but this was more filling. This was like a little mixture of everything. Which one of your siblings do you think will take over the farm? I'll be there. Derek? 
I hope you hear that, Derek. You're taking over the farm. The superstition also states that in order to determine who picks up the check, the credit cards are tossed into a hat and picked out one at a time to determine the last card. <laughs> Three times in a row. Back at campus, a group of players engage in an entirely different sport altogether. Johnny got me into this sport called golf here. Uh, it's a bit diehard. Two kids' nicknames: Johnny Flop Shot, self-proclaimed. Um, this game, if you get it on, it's one point. If you hold it, it's three. After the rust is shaken off, junior John Heffernan would take home the chip chip crown for the week, one that he just might lose track of on his side of the room. This is our room here. We're in the middle room. <laughs> uh, as you can see, uh, the difference of the size of room. It's not that I'm a neat freak or anything, I just sometimes make my bed and stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I'm usually pretty clean inside of the room. I, uh, just tag a little disorganized. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to get on this right after the meeting. <laughs> game day arrives with news regarding Elliot Sheen's eligibility in today's game. After uh, I just played me at the line of five or whatever, and I was kind of hoping I played, and I'll talk to coach a little bit, just kind of going over the situation if you want to be player or not, and uh, sure enough, just called me in the lineup, so couldn't be happy. You know, it's such a relief getting back in the last six games. Immediately following a team meal, the players load up the bus for the trek into Boston for their matchup against the number three ranked Boston College Eagles. It doesn't take long to realize that this wouldn't be the Warriors' night, going down 4-0 in less than 40 minutes of play, and losing the game 4-2. Come on, that's all we gotta do, guys. Keep getting pucks on the net, okay? We gotta, even though we lost this game, we gotta be ready tomorrow. Hoping that home ice would change the momentum, the Warriors come out flying. Despite outshooting Boston College, they find themselves down by a goal in the third period with seconds left. Okay, your room. You can run a cycle off this play. All right? It's just a matter of getting one puck to the here, guys. One puck. Hard work would give them chances, but it would prove to be not enough. That type of effort, every game, every game. There are no freshmen anymore. That's how hard you need to play for a chance to win. That's it. That's all it buys you is a chance. And as frustrated as you are, okay, and I'm sure you're frustrated, I applaud your efforts. I applaud your efforts. I thought we did some good things today. We've got to find a way. But it starts with that all the time. Fortunately, in hockey, retribution can only be a puck drop away. The warrior spirit teaches that one's defeats can be easily forgotten with a triumph. As Elliot Sheen discovers, hard work will inevitably persevere.
competitive spirit, all that does is give you a chance. Okay? So, and it's not right away. It's not instant gratification. So whatever bounces we may have gotten today, we earned two weeks ago. Okay? We earned two weeks ago. There isn't a guy in this locker room that doesn't know we had a good week of practice. For his efforts, Elliot Sheen is given the traditional hard hat passed on by previous winner Jeff Vileka. <laughs> Merrimack would finish fifth in the conference, enough to play Maine in the first round. They know for sure that no matter what happens next, brothers stick together through adversity and hardship. These warriors know full well that the bonds of the sport are unlike anything on earth. Thank you.